kick this off with the S&P 500. This is the daily chart. First thing I want to point out is that the S&P 500 is in a very strong bull trend. The reason why we know this is because we have the moving averages stacked on top of each other. Got the 5 day here, the 13 day here, 20 day here, and 50 day moving averages here. This tells us this is a strong bull trend. Okay. Now I always say to you guys, we do not buy the tip, we buy the dip. This is not just a nursery rhyme or some poem or something or a catchphrase. It's true. It's the truth. All right. So what we have here is a false breakout. The bulls got caught. Now I did say we have a 536 price target, which is right here based on Fibonacci level. But we didn't get it. Now, the reason why I said that, one, based on Fibonacci level, and also what I want to talk to you about today is manipulation or also known as the vector candles or institutional candles. So this right here, I will consider an institutional candle because this is where the market makers were at, you know, they were doing their work, doing their little dirty work. Right, so they got us thinking bull, bull, bull. Right, they wanted us to get like this because if you recall yesterday, I was showing you to put the call ratio for spy, and finally the calls were exceeding the puts. And funny enough, when that happens, when people stop buying more calls, the next day we get a big, big dip to over here where it opened at 428. Okay, that caused people. To what? Retail traders to what? Start getting bearish. And when the market opened, it actually started to drop more. So the bears right at market open and they're in pre-market thinking, yes, we got this. So what so what happened? It dipped all the way down to our support level here at the 13-day moving average. But look at that. It went even a little below intraday, went below past our support level, and then went back, back up. These are called areas of liquidity. There is money below uh, support levels, and there's money above resistant levels. Why? Because the support, and support levels and resistant levels are created purposely by the market makers. And what do what is our us retail traders taught to believe? They, we are taught to believe we should buy at support, and buy and, uh, and sell at resistant. But that's not entirely true. Okay. And because of this, we want to buy when the market makers buy because they're trying to make money. Okay. So in order for us to do that, we need to understand how it works out when we be when we would be able to spot it. We'd be able to spot it when we see it break a critical support level, only for it to come right back up. That's manipulation. Took out the areas of liquidity because this is a strong support. So underneath support, this is a lot of money. Areas of liquidity, which they took out. They took them all out and boom, went right back up. Now here's this orange. Let me take out these moving averages. Now right here, when when we spot vector candles, here's the vector candle, the institutional candle. We want to find the 50% retracement of that candle, the body. I only do the body. I use the Fibonacci retracement level right there. Now I did this earlier. And I put it at the 50% as well as where it opens. This area where it opens and the 50% retracement of this vector candle is the area where we want to enter. And sure enough, this is where the SPY bounced from. If you look at a smaller time frame, you'd be able to see it more clearer that it moved, it opened, bounced off of this area where we would look to enter, and it went all the way up. And now we have another situation very similar to this, except it's reversed. Now we're going to go to the downside. We have this false breakout, just like we had this false breakdown. So over here, we have to look for the last selling candle. Up here, we look for the last 
buying candle, which I have the orange line right here. I identified it right here for you, for us. Here, the 50% of the body as well as where it opened. Okay, so I also have this five-day moving average. Like I said, I like to use the five-day moving average and the other moving average as support and resistance level. So I want to see if SPY can break this five-day moving average. And I am expecting for it to break intraday to take out the areas of liquidity, whoever's trading off this five-day moving average, and then come back down and be rejected. Is that guaranteed? No, but I'll be keeping my eyes on that in case it does. So I would look to enter up just above the five-day moving average if I'm thinking of shorting it. Be careful, though. This is a bull market. I'm just using this as confirmation. So if it does break the five-day and it goes all the way up, I will be looking to see what happens when it comes to this area where the vector candle was. If we get a rejection there, I will be bearish. If we break it and we continue up, this could that's very bullish. This is a bull trend. We buy the dip and let's head back higher to an, another leg. I do have the 40 436 price target still. Okay. But if we get rejected there, I will be bearish. This is a good area to look to short, but you, we must watch to see if it gets rejected. We must watch how the price action behave. Because if it breaks it, it's bullish. If not, I'm bearish. And I would my my down my downside target would be at previous support levels. Of course, I'll bring it back up. The 13 day, we have the 13 day on 428. We also have the 20 day moving average here. But you know, we'll probably head up higher. So I'll be looking for support around this green line right here. This is critical. From 428, you have support here. This is a previous high. Around 425.50, you have this Fib Fibonacci level here at 422.88. Still have the five-day moving average around 420. Okay, now those are many support levels that we got. But if it does break all of that, I'll keep my eyes over here at this level again. This is where the vector candle was. And it's possible that we get a nice sell-off all the way down to 416, 17. And then we'll start to move up even further. But keep in mind, this is a strong bull market. We have a lot of people betting to the downside. This is today's put-to-call ratio. Back to 1.05. A lot of people buying puts. In this bull market, this was the dip. So everybody up here wanted to buy this, right? Buying the tip. Now people want to get bearish. Look at that. Okay, so, you know, this is a strong bull market. Definitely keep your eyes out on that. Don't jump the gun yet thinking we're in a bear market. We don't know that just yet. July, like I said, is usually a very bullish month for SPY for many, many years. Okay, so I hope you got something out of that with the vector candles. You know, that's the best time to enter. It's when the uh, market makers are entering. So, you know, definitely watch out. So, right here, we're watching for a repeat of this scenario. But instead of the, for the long side, we're going to be watching for the short side. If it gets broken, 436 price target. Then my next target after that, 443 for SPY. All right, so let's move on to the triple Q. Very similar. I got it following wick off UTA day, a UTAD phase where we're expecting a nice, nice, you know, market top, but we don't know when the market top is just yet. This is a very strong bull market. Many times we bounce off the five today. We did not. Uh, stay above it intraday we got below it but look where we closed we closed right above the five day moving average so this is a very strong bull trend like i said for spy we don't buy the tip we buy the dip look at it look at the dip 
If you guys bought in this morning at the support level, and of course, like I said, with the area of liquidity, we had support here at 355. This was a previous high based off Fibonacci as well. Took out the stop losses and went right back up. Very similar to SPY. But unlike SPY, Triple Q is right above, right back above the five-day moving average, which I'm looking at as a resistant level. As long as it stays above the five-day moving average, it will be our support level. All right, so keep in mind, be aware that Triple Q could just be taking out the stop losses and then we head down lower, down to maybe 342 where the UT phase is. And then we got the BC phase around 338. That's based off a of wick off distribution method, guys. All right, but if not, if not, if Triple Q can stay above this and get back above and it breaks uh, 362.45, my next price target will be around the 367 to 371 price target. Okay? Guys, we do not get bearish at support. We do not get bearish on a dip in a bull trend. Look at the moving averages stacking above each other. There's nothing that says for us to be bearish just just yet. Now let's go look at the uh, put to call ratio for triple Q. It's loading. Here it is. Look at that. Look at the put volumes compared to the call volumes. Just because it dipped. Just because it dipped. Everybody wants to buy on the low and sell for the high. But when it gets low, nobody wants to buy. Okay? So we've got to be careful with that. Keep your eyes on the price action, guys. Price action. That's where our conviction lies. Okay, so I'm still bullish on Triple Q for now. Until it shows us otherwise, this gap down was nothing. It filled the gap, filled it back up. All right? But, but, keep in mind, just keep in mind that if we do not stay above this five-day moving average and if we don't break this Fibonacci level, there could be more downside. Today, it could have been shorts that shorted here and it went down, gapped up, and the shorts were covering. There could be more selling coming. We're not 100% sure. Of course, we just, gotta, we just gotta continue watching. But right now, because it's a bull trend, I'm gonna continue being a bull. And I don't buy the tip, I buy the dip. Today was a dip, very nice, beautiful dip. We got it. All right, so that's the triple Q. Okay, now moving on from the indices, we're gonna talk a little bit about SPY as well. And I'll take this, take a look at this. I've been bullish on Tesla, but got this false breakout right here. This took like a little more than a week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about a week, five trading days plus another two trading days. So seven days got us with that false breakout. Boom. Double top over here, which I have this orange line. Double top. Came right down, and the bulls were very sad. I was sad to see this as well. I thought that uh, we'd probably come down and um, fill this gap right here, but it did a little more than that. Filled the gap and continued down, but look where it went down to. See this white line? Came right down to our support line. Now, I also want you to take a look at this purple line. That's the 200-day moving average. It's crossing with the five-day moving average, right? It's almost a death cross, but we do got the 20-day above, so it's not too bad. We'll see what happens. Big green candle. Now, been talking about the institutional candles today, the vector candles. That's been the theme of today's technical analysis video. And as you can see right there, now even though it came down to our support line right here, but this, this moving average is also a support. And it took out the stop loss of it and went right back up. Well, look where it stopped. Right at our resistant level. Okay, so if this is a bull trend developing, you got the high, the low, higher high. This right here should be the higher low. 
and we should break this support uh, resistant level right here. If we fail to break it, of course, like I said, area of liquidity is right here around the 662 to 655 area. That's the area of liquidity. If Tesla enters that area and fails to break it and then comes back down, I will be bearish. But if it breaks it, I will look to see if it retests this double top and I will look for it to break to our price target up here around 718, 720. All right. So right now I'm on the sideline for Tesla. Tesla. I want to see what it wants to do, what the price action will tell me, if it will tell me if we're bearish or bullish right now. Okay. So this is looking bullish. It bounced off support, critical support area. Big green Shrek candle. Remember, the institutions, when you see big green candles or big red candles, that's institution putting in that work. And they put in a lot of work today. So we'll see if they continue to push it up. Okay? I think they will. I really do. Got to catch the bulls. Too many people were bullish. This was a big move up. Too many people were bullish. Had to take them out. Take out the stop losses. Right? Areas of liquidity, but it came right down to our stop law, uh, our, our support line right here to continue this bull trend. Now we'll see if it'll continue. We'll see what tomorrow has in store for us. Tomorrow is Friday, and we'll see what happens. All right, but right now I'm neutral. I want to see what happens first. I am leaning more towards the bull side, but I have no position in this right now. I'm going to see what happens. Okay, moving on to Bitcoin. Bitcoin. So sad. Broke our support level right here. Okay. Y'all should know what I'm about to say right now. Area of liquidity taken out. Support, support, support. Look, the support here. Someone enters support down there. Support here. Took it all out. Took it all out. I also said we had support here, which is where I add the blue line 32.6K. Tested it. Broke it. Intraday. Took out all the support. Went right back up. Bulls got screwed over in the last few days. Well, today. <laughs> right? But just remember, this is based off of wick off. Now, at the end of phase C, before it enters the phase D, where we're expecting for Bitcoin to go as close to the moon as possible, it's supposed to be a higher low compared to here. We have the spring here for based on wick off accumulation, the test. Now, we're expecting to get a higher low, okay? Um, if we take a look at this wick off, this is the wick off, and this is where it explains the test. A spring is often followed by one or more tests. So, guys, we have one test, and it can be just one test. It just It could be good enough, but it is possible. That we do get a second test. So don't panic. The reason why we're using uh, wick off is because it's all about the manipulation. And how to deal with it. The reason why I'm talking about vector candles is about manipulation. These are manipulated markets. Market makers don't want us to make money. Okay? So they're not going to make it that easy for us. Look at all the news. It's bad news. Uh, is extreme fear in Bitcoin right now or in crypto in general. Extreme fear. So what's the old saying? When everyone's fearful, you get greedy. When everyone's greedy, you get fearful. Okay? So let's be objective. I challenge you all to be objective about this. Okay? I am still bullish on Bitcoin. It just took out the areas of liquidity today. Got to take it out. Got to take you guys out. They got to make their money. But if you got diamond hands, you still be holding or you'll be looking to accumulate at these levels because that's where they are accumulating. Okay? And if it drops down to test again around the 31 to 30, 29.9 to 31K level, I may look to enter some more. Okay? But right now, um, I'll be looking to see if Bitcoin can get back above this green line right now. Right now, it was support for you know a few weeks now. 
and it could right now it will be serving as resistance. So if it gets rejected, you may expect some more downside, and it may come back down to the test area around here where I will look to accumulate. If not, and it breaks this, then it's a very good sign that we are heading into phase D. Okay, this is phase D. So this dot, this low right here was expected. It's matching, okay? Spring test, another low at the end of phase D, okay? And uh, at the end of phase C, excuse me. And then we will head into phase D, okay? But right now, so many people are fearful, but I believe that the big boys, the market makers, they are, they are accumulating while retail traders were selling to them and they're buying our Bitcoin. All right, so bottom line, I'm bullish on Bitcoin. Bullish on the crypto market still. This is the future. All right, but like I said, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. This is for educational purposes. And I really, really hope that I achieve my goal and giving you guys value. And I hope you guys learn something so that you can improve in your own trading. All right. Other than that, good luck, guys. I hope you crush this market. Continue to beat this market. And I'll see y'all next time.